Tired looking woman dressed in a tight leather bodice. Or bodice and leggings. The odor of cheap perfume surrounds her like a cloud and her face is covered with makeup. Why don't you stay? Okay, this is actually the same. Maybe you can help me find something I'm missing. Sure. Follow her, blah blah blah. There were some things I wanted to know. Okay, so these are actually no different. Damn, that sucks. I was hoping she would point out, like, where the other staff dog is. Why the fuck do they attack so goddamn much? I don't get it. It makes no sense. Angry Hive Dweller. Harlot, Harlot. I'm literally just examining everybody at this point. So I'm thinking, maybe. No, they're all just Hive Thugs. I'm confused. Kinda. My dog. Oh dear, what happened? I wasn't paying attention. This is what happened. Yeah, more high thugs. Jesus. Either that or I have defeated all three of them. Angry Hive Dweller. I'm just going to assume that I've defeated them all. Yep, yeah, please get me out of here. Mark, get a move on. I mean, if I have defeated them all, then that's good. But I can't find any others, and this area is tiny, so you'd think. It wouldn't be hard to find them. What does this do? How to play. Oh, whoops. No, I don't need how to play. I would if, it, if I hadn't played the game in, like, weeks, but... I played it fairly recently. It's also fairly straightforward. It's point and click, for the most part. Literally, you can play the entire game with just the mouse. If you use the keyboard, it literally just makes things a bit easier. I really hope I did do this. Oh, I did actually do all three. So what must have happened is I killed one of them, and then when I attacked the second one, a third person came out of an alleyway. I'm assuming that third person must have been the third starved dog, but I didn't realise. You again, the woman turns to face you, her lips peeling back in a snarl. You have news for Sevtai? I found the three starved dogs barking and penned three of them in the dead book. Updated my journal. The powers be not blind in their justice this day. The woman reaches into her spider-like hair and draws forth a copper earring. Here you are. A pretty big... a pretty bit... it should fetch. Tis worth 33 coppers at least. I'm sure it belonged to one of my sisters, but she won't be needing it anymore. Very well. Very well, Sevtai. Yay! <laughs> Couldn't carry anymore, so I had to drop it. The voice says so much. Shite, what could I get rid of? Rusty dagger. Yeah. Oh wow, so if I do quick loot, I can actually... Wait. Hold up. No, 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 no. I thought she was wearing, like, an earring. Oh, crap. I can't spin the camera. Is that what she was wearing? No, it can't have been. I'm confused. Hmm. Whatever. I guess. I'm confused. The mausoleum. I'm still thinking, like, where could I go to sell stuff? Wait, can I actually go in here? It just looks like maybe, but yeah, maybe not. Mm-hmm. Also, this leads to the northwest. I think. Which I think is where you could get random quests. There, yeah, it's all fully explo uh, explosed. Explored. Ragpicker Square. The flop house. Ah! Flop house sounds like a good place. As long as I don't get attacked. I'm ju I just, at this point, I'm looking for somewhere I can sell shit. Hello! You see a short balding man standing in what serves as, a f as the foyer, a foyer, to this ramshackle flop house. His bushy brows are furrowed in concentration as he picks at what appears to be scabs on his large bulbous nose. Greetings! The man doesn't bother to look up, instead he continues to stare cross-eyed down his nose. Yeah, what do you want? Could I rest here? I had some questions. Well, ain't that nice, he flashes you a sarcastic yellow tooth smile, and I'm sure you'll be you'll find your answers someday. But I've got me a business to run, so if you don't want a bed, then I suggest you pike off. Uh, okay, never mind. So these are just hive dwellers. Nesta. Hold her. Hold up. 
You see an aging man in soiled and tattered clothes frantically pacing in the corner. His shock of filthy white hair sticks out in every direction of his, and his face, encrusted with dirt and streaks of dried blood, is covered with grey stubble. Every few seconds he stops pacing and flares about suddenly, uh, muttering and cursing as if assaulted by some unseen foe. He does not seem to notice your approach. Greetings. At the sound of your voice, the old loon wills about to face you. Also, I really want to Google a merchant. I really should have done this to begin with, but whatever. To face you, his wide staring eyes bulging in their sockets. He regards you for a brief moment, then returns to his raving. No, 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 it's not you. But soon, yes, soon. Uh, who are you talking to? Okay, the old man seems oblivious to your present. To presence. You'll come, yes, you'll come, and old Nestor will be waiting. Are you alright? No, Nestor's face turns beet red and his whole body shakes in protest. My fork. Can't leave without my fork. Fork, fork, fork. Your fork? Oh dear. Fork, fork, fork. Can't go home without my fork. Nestor's frenzy reaches a violent crescendo. He begins hopping up and down maniacally. Then suddenly stops, lower, lowers his head, and runs headlong into a large wooden cupboard that stands against the back wall of the flophouse. The force of the impact knocks the old man flat on his back. After a few seconds, he stands back up, a dazed expression on his face, gone, stolen. Can't go home without my fork. Stolen, you say? Who took your fork? Nestor stares at you for a long moment, uh, then begins rummaging through the pockets of his filthy tunic. After a few seconds, he produces what appears to be a dismembered ear. Judging by the scent and colour of the air, you'd wager that the old loon has been toting it around in his pocket for some time. You have my fork, don't you? Don't you? He holds the ear close as if speaking to it. Bring back my fork. Maybe I can help you. Wait, wait, waiting. He shakes the ear violently as he shouts into it. Until you bring it back, then I can go home. Right, I'll try to find your fork then. Farewell. Updated my journal. Okay, right, well while I'm... I was going to say waiting. I just want to do a quick Google, eh? Yeah, Planescape Torment. I just want to know, like, merchant. Alright, so, mer merchants. Perfect. Yeah, first place to sell loot. That would be perfect, um. thank you. There's so much shit that I have and I can't pick up anything else. Ah, oh, great. I'm getting attacked. Kill him! Damn it. Damn it. Oh my god, we're all missing. Ding, ding, ding. Come on. Oh my god, he ain't dead yet. Oh, now he runs. Aha, there we go. Northwest, it would appear. So I'll go there next. Oh, yeah, a, a, a thing. Nice. I might as well talk to Ma. She constantly want to earn some jink. Your first impression of Ma is that he needs a long bath, preferably away from any creature that has any sense of smell. You can almost see the stench waft from his body in sinister yellow tendrils. He motions towards you frantically in an effort to get you to come, come over and talk to him. Hold your breath and leave. Approach this person and hear what he has to say. A look of excitement crosses his face as you approach. Thank you for stopping. My name is Ma, and I have a favour to ask you. I'm listening. It is a matter of life and death. I must be delivering this here box, or it'd be me head, uh, be, be me head for sure. Tis me bad luck that I twisted me leg something fierce. So will you help me out by delivering this air box for me? I'll deliver the box for you. Ma slowly takes out a small box from within the recesses of his ragged clothing. The briefest of moments, you see a, a look of regret cross his face, then it is gone. As he looks at you and hands you the box, a slight shimmer surrounds the box as both of you and Ma touch it. A sigh of relief is heard as Ma releases the box into your care. What now? This be needing to be delivered to... Oh, Kuatra. You can usually be found somewhere down in the southeastern section of the hive. Oh, and lest you try to say I didn't warn you, whatever happens, do don't open the box. And don't leave the hive with the box, and I'll be off with you. I'll be back when I deliver the box. Uh-oh. The fact he ran away with a bunch of hee-hee-hee-hee-hee <laughs> is a bad sign. I'm delivering the box, I won't look inside it. Actually, no, I will, but I'll say first. And then if I don't like the, the outcome, I will... What is it? An ornate box. There appears to be a small wooden box, intricate designs etched in gold on the box. At one time, this box would have been worthy enough to be displayed at an, any aristocrat's estate. However, years of neglect have taken their toll and it appears to be falling apart. If not for the large ruby mounted on the front of the box, 
It would be worthless. Feelings of dread seem to emanate from the box. Use. Hmm. You see a well-crafted, ornate box with a large red gem mounted on the face of the box. Feelings of dread seem to emanate around it. Pull it. Open it. Oh, Jesus. Fiend from Morador's box. Oh my god, I just realised it was barely injured. I'm hurt. Damn it. Oh god, look at it move. What? I want Mott to get on his own. Special ability! Near death. We got a. Like my have oh, we leveled up. Nice. A rusted dagger. Oh, it was more that leveled up. Either way. Nice. Yay. Awesome. Done. I mean, I opened the box, but. Wait, did, do we still have the box? Oh! Morador's Ruby. A fairly large ruby recovered from Morador's box. Gems of this quality are valued by practitioners of the art as a component for various spells. Oh! Nice! Uh, what was I gonna do? Oh yeah, I wanna check my journal. Oh, so it's not different. Find Nesta's fog. Mm. I need to find a fog for him. So, which one was it? Ragpicker Square. Southwestern portion of the hive. Mm. Actually, because we're here, I may as well. Use the flop house to rest. I doubt it'll cost very much. Can I rest here? I'm sure you can, Burke, if you got the drink for it. Nobody puts up here for free, except old Mister over there, and that's only because no one's addled. Addled coved enough to mess with him. How much for a bed? Actually, wait, no, tell me about this Nester. Nester's that balmy old sod in the corner there. He hikes a thumb over his shoulder toward the back of the room. Watch a step around him, Burke. He's not in the right head. Always rattling his bone box about his fork and all. Wish someone to do us all a favour and get rid of him. Why don't you get rid of him yourself? You don't think I've tried? I have. And look what what I gets for me effort. He leans his face to w uh, forward and points at the bleeding scabs on his nose. The balmy sod nearly bit me nose off. I could get rid of him for you. For a price. I'll tell you what, Cutter. If you can get rid of him for me, you can stay here for free as often as you like. Deal? Fair enough. I'll do it. Updated my journal. Well then don't just stand around gawking. Get to it. He immediately returns to his scab picking. Can't you see I'm a busy man? So, I wonder, can I talk to Nestor and ask about the fork and where I could find it? Oh. No, I need to find the fork. I'm not just going to say, look, All you need right. to fuck off. Not exactly nice now, is it? <laughs> Sorry, dude, but you gotta fuck All off. Right. So this leads to the southwest. Hmm. At this point, I'm just thinking how I can get to the northwest. Wait. Northwestern portion. Oh, well, there you go. Wait, no, northwest is here. Oh! Wait, so there's merchants here? Really? Hive thug, hive thug. Collector. Harlot. Who the hell would be selling shit? Unless it's Ragpicker Square, maybe. I need to go there for the main quest, I suppose. Fuck off. I ain't fighting in this state. Jeez. Oh god. Don't like the look of this. Yeet. Ragpicker Square. Alright. 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 So there's a lot of collectors. Although Ragpicker Square is kind of like the collector's territory, isn't it? Ratbone. I'm also just looking around to see what's around the place. Fully exploring an area is always a good idea. Then you get a kind of... I would say you get a sense of it, but not really. The second platform looks like it's about to collapse. And it probably will. So how's this looking? This place is big. Oh my god. But this is where I need to be if I want to find Farod. I don't know if it's Farod, Farod. I don't really know how you're meant to pronounce his name. I just kind of go with whichever. Both of them come out. 
Mm-hmm. Oh god. Wait, so what's this? This archway leads only inches into the small building before becoming blocked by a solid wall of refuse. The rubbish is packed so tightly it may as well be stones and mortar. If you come closer, however, the archway's outline begins to shimmer. You notice a ha the handful of junk you've been carrying about begins to shimmer as well. Thrust it into the archway. Oh! The wall refuses. Oh, the wall of refuse flickers, wavers, and seems to have fallen in on itself, revealing an open space beyond it. A passage or portal seems to have formed within the frame of the archway. Done. Oh! Where the fuck does that take you? A trash filled archway. Trash warrens. Midwife's hut. Shagrave's kip. Northwestern part of the hive. What the fuck? Mm. Trash warrens. That sounds like it could be a merchant's place. Perhaps. To the trash warrens. Oh, there it is. Wait, what? How do we get there? I mean, this is confusing. It looks like I can't. What if I try and go over here? Oh, right, so... Okay. No, I don't want to thrust any junk into anything. Get out of here. I'm so confused. Unless I'm meant to go... Where's the door? It's there. If I could walk onto this... No. I'm not entirely sure. We have a lot of stuff in this place. Although I think this is the only stuff here. Like the midwife's hut and all that crap. But I think to get to the midwife's hut... It looks like it was built to hold rainwater. Right. Oh, there, there. I think this must be the midwife's hut. Let me guess, I'm going to get yelled at for walking into somebody else's house. Or maybe not. Midwife, old Mebeth. This squat old woman looks like she's had all the colour bled out of her. Everything from her hair to her shawl to her robe. All are shades of grey. The only splotches of colour on her come from several strange herbs, which are tied to her belt by the stalks. The herbs make a strange swish when she moves like a broom. Greetings! The elderly woman turns and stares at you and you notice... The grey shades blanketing her body extend to her features as well. Her hair is a wispy grey, and her eyes are like chips of granite. She frowns when she sees you, and who might you be, hmm? Uh, the name's Adan. I don't really know who I am. So you're not yourself, child? She squints, then points at your chest. Hard to piece together the man beneath all that treasury and scrawling scars, is it? Maybe. Who are you? With a sly cackle, she wags her eyebrows. Have you not heard of old Mebeth, then? The midwife, midwife, I can't say wife, midwife of the square. Have you not now? She narrows her eyes and her voice drops. Well, now you have. For, for I be Mebeth. You're a midwife. What do you do? Updated my journal. I set bones right, drive the cough out of the sick, yank out squealing stubborn babes, mend cloaks or a rag or two, make cures, cures and herbs and other such. She squints at you, studying your scars, be needing a cure or three, do you then? Cures? Aye. You be needing some cures to look after. Or to look at you. You want to buy some, dear? She glances at the scars covering your body again. Then shrugs. Too late to be asking for them, I think. Actually, we could use some healing. Uh, We could use some healing. Mebeth nods. Very well, then. She reaches for one of the dried herbs at her belt, snaps it off at the stalk, then grinds it into her... In her calloused palms. Small wisps of dust and pollen rise from her hands. She then mumbles to herself, then blows the dust into the air. Take a deep breath. Dated my journal. Oh, damn. The grey pollen swirls around the room, blan blanketing you and your companions. You breathe deeply, and less than a moment later, you feel strangely refreshed. Thanks, Mebeth. Before I go, I have some other questions for you. Go on and ask them. Oh, there we go. Whoa. So do you know, know, know someone named Farad? Farad, that, that... Pah. You watch as Mebeth spits once, twice, three times. Then follows it by making a semicircle over her heart. That gold tid. What should be wanting with the likes of him? I need to find him. Do you know where he is? He's not in Ragpicker Square. That much I can tell you. You need to find a way under the square to get to that turd skip... Uh, <laughs> turd skippers. Turd spider's kip. She spits again. Even talking about it, only a foul taste it does. He's under the square. She jabs her finger at the floor. Aye, he's buried beneath these piles of trash. Him and his boys. In a tough time, you'd... 
of digging him out of his nest, she shakes her head. Let be, let be, child. I need to find him. How do I get down there? Maybe this frowns, then sighs. Here, tell. Farrow's got a gate that leads to his nest somewhere here in the square. It's just a matter of finding it. You might want to ask some of the others, some who travel a bit more than old Mebeth. And some other questions. I'm missing a journal. Do you know where one could be found? Never thinks. Haven't seen one. If it's in the square, which I doubt, since folks don't traffic much with books and the like. Most likely it's been sold or stolen. Is it something important to you then? A magic thingy? All glowing and sparkling with magic, say? If so, you might never see it again. Maybe not. I could use some healing. Oh, she does the same. Oh, cool. What do you sell here, Mebeth? I sell rags and herbs and cures and charms and mixes and poultices and all that wash, she shrugs. Also, if you find a queer item you can't figure out, bring it to Mebeth. No promises, child, but mayhap I can riddle out what it is. I see. Can I see what you have to sell, then? Yeah! I can actually sell her shit. Finally, the Tome of Bone and Ash is something I actually think I want to keep. Oh my god, she has clot charms. They're so useful. As are bandages. Ste- You can st Oh, steal. Identify. It cost me a hundred to do so. Should probably sell some shit first. Right, bronze ring. Bronze ring. Oh, copper earring. Copper earring. Can't sell her weapons, but I can sell all of this, which is nice. I also love that the rusty dagger is worth one fucking copper. Ah, dear. Right, I will sell that. Nice. Now I have a bunch. More money. Right, identi- No, identify. Triangle earring. Ooh, there we go. What? Wait, what? So you see the small earring from folding a note in the mouth of one of the walking cops at the mortuary. It's a beautiful earring, but despite its beauty, all it seems to do is remind you how strange this world you're woken up in is. This earring carries a minor blessing from one of the gods of wealth on some backwater prime world. When held in the hand and the word copper is whispers, whispered, it gives the wearer 33 copper commons. This blessing can be used three times before the enchantment is exhausted. How bizarre. I could sell it for 120, which would give me more than it's worth. Unless, hold up, I could quite happily just use the charm and get rid of it. Where's my money? Oh, there. So, 83. Oh, it's gone. Oh, man. So I could have got 120 instead of just 99. Even still. Could, yeah, could I rest here? She nods a cost trial. I have a mess of blankets in the corner that would serve. That would be fine, thank you. Oh, there we go. I didn't actually want to rest. But well, that's whatever. That works. I suppose. Done. Done. So I can sell shit to her. Who could I sell weapons to? On oh, the plus side, it's actually daytime now. Hmm. Hmm. Ratbone! I think I'll talk to him and then that'll do. This man is whistling a cheerful tune and playing a well uh, with a well-kept fighting knife. Uh, okay. As you approach him, he stops whistling and gives you a curious look. Hmm? What you want? I had some questions. My name's Ratbone Cutter. I'm a thief for hire in the Employer Sharegrave, the boss of the collectors you see around this square. He pays me most to learn his lads to be real quiet-like and how to fight. If they runs into a spot of trouble, that's likely the only questions I'll answer for, for you, Cutter. He sniffs and shrugs. A thief for hire, could you train me? Sure, for a spot of jink. Been trained before? No, I haven't. That's fine. I'm gonna cuff you now, so dodge it. He suddenly swings his open hand at your head. Dodge the blow. You avoid Ratbone's blow, not bad, Cutter. Now about that spot of jink. Fifty commons and I'll see you trained right up. Sounds good. Here. You know you got to stop doing whatever you're doing now, right? You can't be a warrior or whatnot and a thief. Are you alright with that, Cutter? Ooh. No, I'd best not. I'll take my copper back. Copper back. Farewell, Ratbone. Do I, did I actually keep the copper then? I did. Okay, that's cool. I'm glad I didn't just take it and was like, well, fuck you. <laughs> that would've sucked. I'm just trying to think of what I could do. Um, not too sure. Right. I mean, I came over here purely to find a merchant, and I did, so... I'm kind of happy in that regard. One thing I should do is go back to where I've actually fought a bunch of... Um... 
I was going to say hires. A bunch of thugs. Because I'm pretty sure their loot does not disappear. Yeah, it doesn't. So if I just get near this, I can take the bronze bracelet. Okay, more thugs want to fight. Cool. And we can take the rusty dagger. It's worth one, so it's really not worth it. I do think the combat log is actually a good idea to have activated. Owned. Oh. Nice. Oh, I got clutch arm. Nice. That's useful. It's honestly a clutch arm's just really, really good. Although I don't think it's worth the price you have to pay if you want to buy it. It's incredibly expensive for what it does. It heals nine hit points. Which honestly, it's quite a bit, not gonna lie. But at the same time, bandages heal three. Yeah, it would require like holding a lot more bandages, but you can buy them for six copper. Whereas the clot charm is fucking 60. Like you could buy 10 bandages and that would recover 30 hit points, not nine. So it's just a much better idea. Is there actually anybody here I've not spoken to? I mean, there's plenty of people, but I'm also mean like actual named people. Oh yeah, Ben! Bane! Bean! Ben! I forgot about this guy. You see a heavy set man with sharp features and a pained expression. Despite his huge frame, however, he has an effeminate look about him and unlike the other resi residents you've seen, he looks to have bathed recently. As you approach, he looks up hopefully and calls out in a high voice. Craddock, good sir. What? Uh, his hopeful expression dies as he studies your face. A thousand apologies, good sir, if I have given offence. He gives a, sol a slight uh, bow. I'm called Bane the Sender, third child of uh, Die Bane the Sender. I am one of the many runners in the employ of the House of Senders. No apologies necessary. Uh, ben, what do you want? A thousand apologies for troubling you with such a trivial matter, but I seek Craddock, an overseer in the hive. Bane looks like he is in pain, but alas, he eludes me. He looks at you, hopefully again. Could it be you have heard of such a man? I'm sorry, I haven't. Bane gives a deep sigh. I'm bound to deliver a message to him, and as of yet, fortune has chosen not to favour me. I could help you if I came across if I come across a man. I could pass along your message. I might be able to find him and deliver your message for a price. Bane face lights up like a lantern. Of course, good sir. If you can find this Craddock and pass along the message, I shall pay you for your troubles. All right, what's the message? Bane recites the message almost like a mantra. The shipment must be in cursed by the third day or there will be a penalty. Bane frowns. I am told that Craddock will know of the shipment to which the message pertains. If I see Craddock, I will pass along the message. Is there anything you can tell me about him before I go that might help me find him? He is said to be a giant of a man, stern of features, that he is an overseer in one of the highest marketplaces. Alas, I know little else than that, good sir. I see, that's enough to go on for now. Bane bows. Thank you, sir. Should fortune favour you in... You are able to bear the message to Craddock. To Craddock. So be kind as to return and tell me of it. I will see to it your efforts are rewarded. Very well. Farewell, Bane. I've realised that this, this is a game I should probably only record for like two hours at a time because my god, it hurts my voice. I love the game to death. I absolutely do. But my god, it hurts. <laughs> I mean, when you're talking non-stop, especially when you're just reading stuff, it especially takes its toll. Are you serious? Oh my god. Kill him! Oh, I, f I took a swing, too. Swing, bada bada. Open dialogue window. Wait, what? Oh, okay. What's this do? Toggle AI. Oh, shit. Ugh. Toggle AI, I think, means your party members? Maybe? Lock view on character. Oh my god, that's so better. So much better. Please. Okay, cool. The other thugs did not decide to attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, never mind. Yes, they did. I'll just take this. Nice. Take that. I want to attack, Jesus. Die. Die. And another one. My inventory's full. Die. Crap. Wait a minute. Oh, no. I didn't get rid of this. Shoot. I did that, would it? Oh, it does. <gasps> Ooh. This is cheap, but I'm doing it. Yeah. There we go. 
I didn't, I only, oh god, yeah I just realised, I only got rid of the items that were in, what is its imagery, okay locking the view on the character is good but I can't do this, like I can't set him to move a really long way, it kind of sucks, okay so it's pointless actually going to where I was going to, mm-hmm, so instead I'll just go in here, and that is going to be the end of this session, haven't made much progress but it's whatever. This game is mostly an experience. I'm not aiming to make loads of progress per session. I just want to experience the game and all of its... I don't know what, what word I was looking for. All of its quirkiness, I suppose. It's a very good game. And I can definitely see why it's... Why a lot of people see it as one of the best... CRPGs... Ever. It's not just like a one of the best CRPGs of... The year it came out, it's kind of regarded as one of the best CRPGs of all time, along with games as well, such as Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale. Either way, I'm getting off track, so that is going to be the end of this session. Alright, thanks Mark. That's going to be the end of this session. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you have enjoyed, and until next time, take care.